All right, welcome everybody to a brand new segment where we focus on the variation of parameters. So this is a new tactic that we're gonna investigate to solve some type of uh, second and higher order differential equations. So I wanna actually, this is still linear, just wanna highlight that from the get-go. Um, uh, let's say that I write a second order differential equation. It's gonna look like this, right? We have that in the previous segments as well. A0x times y will be equal to g of x, right, for it to be linear. So what we did was we divided both sides by a2 of x. Um, so let's do this, y double prime plus a1x divided by a2 of x, y prime plus a0 of x divided by a2 of x, y will be equal to g of x divided by a2 of x, right? So I divided everywhere by um, a2. And then I called this p of x, I call this q of x, and I call this f of x, right? And if I kind of go out and rewrite this whole thing, you're going to see that this is what I'm going to get, p of x, y prime plus q of x, y will be equal to f of x. All right, so this is a second order um, linear differential equation. So in the previous segment, what we did was we looked at uh, if these were constant values or rather this was a constant value like 5 to 10, this was a constant value. And I looked at the cases where this f of x or g of x, however you want to call it, has a specific form. As an example, in the previous segment, if this f of x was 1 of x, I was not able to apply that approach. Remember, I looked at e to the power of you know 2x, 3x. I looked at sine, I have a cosine, I have some kind of a polynomial. Um, so those are kind of limited. So now in this particular approach, I'm going to relax that. Okay, I'm actually going to do two major changes. The first major change is that I'm going to say that this f of x can be anything. Okay, now that's a big uh, change, right? The second thing I'm going to introduce is I'm going to say that, hey, you know what? In the previous p of x was some number, q of x was a number. Now I'm going to say that not necessarily anymore. Okay, so this variation parameters is much more comprehensive and actually um, you can completely skip if you choose to uh, do the undetermined coefficients and simply apply the variation of parameters because this is kind of like um, an overarching umbrella that also covers the undetermined coefficients section as well. Okay, um, obviously there has to be some limitation so it's not all good news but um, before I go into the details, I want to just simply write to you what is the advantages of this as opposed to undetermined coefficients. So we have some notes of it, okay? Let's call this advantages. And the first one is a biggie. If we have a solution for the corresponding homogeneous equation, Okay, so if we have a solution for the corresponding homogeneous equation, we can always get a particular solution. So this was not the case at all when I had the undetermined coefficients because I was kind of limited for the function of the f of x as I mentioned like if this was one of x I was not able to find it but now I'm saying I'm going to relax it I can find it for any um, okay and also the process is the same as previous uh, segments where we are going to have the complementary sol uh, solution which is for the corresponding homogeneous equation right then I'm going to do the particular and I'm going to sum them up also the second is related to the first so it's worth highlighting is that g of x or also f of x can be any function. Unlike the undetermined coefficients section. Okay. Also, I'm going to write about this. Um, I mentioned this. Not limited to equations. I mean differential obviously this is the course with constant coefficients it's not limited to that and these are big deal right uh, well what are disadvantages I want to just write it disadvantages Co 
complexity increases significantly for higher order uh, you know uh, DEs. As I increase my the order of my equation, I will get a much, much, much more complex things to deal with. You will see in a moment that this is going to have matrices. So you're going to solve, for instance, for a, let's say fifth order differential equation, you have to solve five by five matrix. Okay, get the determinant of it and all. So it's, it, it gets complicated. Plus, you will see that I need to get some, uh, you know, I didn't write this within disadvantages, but you will see that I will have to every single time get an integral. And that integral will depend on how the GFX forms. Sometimes I will not be able to obtain my uh, uh, integral of the solution. Okay, so there are some limitations in here. So it's not all great news. Just want to highlight that. Okay. So okay, let's go back. So the first thing is that just like I said, I'm going to obtain the YC, and the YC will be obtained by looking at this particular equation: y double prime plus p of x y prime plus q of x y is equal to zero so basically this is the homogeneous equation let's say that my solution is y1 and y2 right i mean we have exercised this many times so you know this part okay and as you have not noted uh, uh, previously this is significantly simpler to find a solution to this equation as opposed to the particular solution the goal is now to find the particular solution okay um i uh, you know, I just want to highlight, uh, usually it's not a good idea to memorize the approach, right? But there are some instances where it makes sense to memorize this. This is one of them, okay? Otherwise, this gets a bit more, uh, the derivation is very lengthy, okay? So I don't think you will be able to have time in an exam setting to do the derivation. So I, I recommend that you memorize what I'm going to write now, okay? This yp of x, so basically, this is the particular solution, as I have this... Uh, I'm going to write u1 of x, which I will talk about momentarily, y1 of x, y1 is the solution to the corresponding homogeneous equation, plus u2 of x times y2 of x. Obviously, the name of the game over here is, hey, what is u1, what is u2, right? And we discussed this as well from the, at the beginning of the higher order differential equation section. We said that for the solutions to be linearly independent, we have to have these, right? So it is all coming together now, how to approach. I introduced something for linearly independent solutions, something called the wrong scheme matrix. And at that moment, right back there, you may feel like, okay, I got introduced to this wrong scheme, but okay, it tells me that whether the solutions are linearly independent or dependent, is there anything more it can accomplish? That's where this comes in handy. This U1 and U2 will be all obtained by using the wrong, wrong scheme. Okay? Let's go ahead and write this U1 prime again i will highlight this is the mistake that i'm going to see in the exam sometimes students just take this as u1 it is u1 prime that's what the formula is okay u1 prime will be equal to w1 by w well, w is the wrong skin and i have this u2 prime not u2 is w2 by w um, and I, let me write it w is the wrong skin you may want to review that segment that we discussed wrong skin, wrong skin. And I will put a link on the right up hand side uh, so you can easily go there. Okay. So here is how this W is going to be formed. W is, you remember I have two solutions to the homogeneous equation. So it will be this. So actually it's not too bad, right? Um, so let's also talk about W1. W1 will be. So you're going to replace the first, because it says 1, we are going to replace the with 0 and f of x. Okay, f of x on the right hand side of the equation. Okay, so I'm going to still keep this y2, y2 prime. Okay, actually, even if, if you want to memorize this, you can get this, you know, when I take the determinant of this matrix, 0 times y2 prime, which is 0, minus y2 x f of x. So you can see if you choose to, you can simply multiply. I don't recommend to multiply because you know, sometimes people get negative. But you can simply calculate this. It's not too bad. Okay. Let me go to the W2. And this time I will with the other way around. Y1, Y1 prime. I'll get 0, F of X. When I take the determinant of this matrix, I'm going to get myself Y1 of X times F of X. Minus 0, but that's gone, right? You will need to take the integral of this because what you will obtain over here 
will be the derivative of this u1 and u2 functions that I'm interested in finding. Okay, so that that the very last uh, process that I said is, is sometimes the name of the game. It may not enable me to find the u1 and u2. Okay. I'm talking about analytically, obviously. Okay, now you may rightfully ask me, okay, you, t you said that hey, this uh, complexity increases significantly with uh, order, right? I'm increasing my order of the equation, I get much more complicated um, matrices. So, okay, but you just talked about, you know, second order. Well, let me address that. Let me go ahead and talk about higher order, okay? So let's write uh, third and higher order de so i will write uh, you know i'll take a shortcut because i don't want you to you know watch me writing a bunch of different equations so uh, p n minus 1 x y n minus 1 plus all the way to p1 x y prime plus p0 x y is equal to f of x so this is the nth order as you can see okay and this, the complementary solution by obtained by taking this f of x is, is equal to zero or the homogeneous equation is I will get myself something like this c1y1 plus c2y2 and I have n of these right cn yn so I have n y uh, n solutions to the homogeneous equation so that's again making sense to us so then the, the how are we are going to obtain is you will have a u1 of x times y1 of x plus u2 of x, y2 of x, and then I will all the way go, and I still need to find u n of x, y n of x. Okay, then how am I going to obtain my, this u1, u2, u3, that's the big question, right? So let's write it in here, u prime of k, k is just the number between 1 and n, right? Um, let's actually, that will be k to wrong skin by w and as i mentioned k can be one two and it can go all the way to n right so let's define w here and the w is going to look like this in the previous one do you remember we had y1 y2 and i had y1 prime over here y2 prime and then i kind of you know finished right so in here i will continue all the way to the yn but i will do the same approach it's not that different i'm going to have yn prime and obviously, now I will go down to the n minus all the way to the y1, n minus 1, right? And I will have y2, n minus 1 derivative, and I have yn, n minus 1 derivative of that. And now I'm going to obtain this determinant, right? It can get it real complicated real soon, right? I mean, you know it, right? Um, and how am I going to obtain W? So I discussed this, but I didn't discuss that. So let me discuss that as well. It is symmetric to what we've done. So this uh, WK is, is basically what I will do is I will do a substitute, substitute column K with this, you know, I mean transpose of it, but 0, 0, you know, f of x. So that's what I did for 2 by 2 as well, right? So if I write this, I will have like W1, for instance, will be when I see up go up up here, I will simply write 0, 0 all the way to f of x, right? And the rest will be the same. So let me kind of quickly write that. 0, y2, all the y n, 0, y2 prime, all the way to y n prime, and all the way, all the way, all the way, I get myself f of x over here y2 of n minus 1, y n of n minus 1, and then bam, that is going to be my f first one. How about the third one? Let's just write for the, a good measure, right, to demonstrate in case you get exposed to this. So y1, y2, now y3 will be 0, and let me go all the way to y n, right, so this is going to be y1 prime, y2 prime, 0, y n prime, tick, 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 right, y1 n minus 1 y2 n minus 1 f of x then i have y n n minus 1 and then i have myself this right so this will be my wrong scheme for this particular complicated case okay is this more dense mathematically yes the approach is this more more dense well there's more steps okay you have to do multiple times like i said i have a fifth order i have to complete this five times right 
you, so you have to pr repeat this process many times okay so that's the deal breaker if you want to call it that way all right okay thank you for watching the segment so now what I will do is I have established this I'll go ahead and solve uh, you know a couple questions to illustrate how this is done thank you